It started with dyeing belly dance veils, then painting them. But after one bitter full moon midnight in early February a couple of years ago after a heavy snowstorm, I trundled out into the woods behind my house to gaze and be amazed by the beauty of the knife-edged crystalline quiet world and wanted to make a painting, not paint a veil. I know why I love to dance, I know why I love to teach, and I know why I love being a life coach. Presenting this was an opportunity to explore why I love to paint on silk. What's puzzling to me is that, as an action, it's kind of boring, even constrained. Drawing with a squeeze bottle of dye resist cramps my hand. While dancing is the joy of being the sinuosity I could feel in the snakes my brother taught me to catch. It's the delight of surfing music like water and becoming one with it. And it's, it's gratitude in being in my own imperfect but vital body as a way to make a positive difference in the world. Well, I find myself questioning it. Teaching and coaching are both rich exchanges. It's a humbling honor to be of service, to help others learn and grow, and to do so myself in the process. What I want to explore in my painting is how I benefit, and more importantly, how does it benefit others? A few things are clear. I'm drawn to render the seasons through landscapes. When I worked as, at an Asian antique gallery after completing my undergraduate degree, I learned that in Shinto homes, wall hangings are changed seasonally. I loved the recognition of transiency and impermanence implicit in this practice. Silk reflects and extends this concept, wafting with each breeze, reminding us of our evanescence and our interconnectedness. I love that I can't erase, die, resist, or paint. It requires me to loosen up, trust, and not try to control it much. In this way, it is healing. As a child, I was forever drawing slender girls, idealized versions of myself, hiking jagged peaks or riding bareback in the freedom of the outdoors. I struggled with my weight. I also wanted these ideal girls to have perfect faces. So at 10, I would erase through paper and have to tape a new piece on from behind. Then, so as not to do that, would press paper on paper against a window pane and trace. But tracing lacks vitality. I'd lose the energy of the original line and the whole thing would go flat, and it still does. Many silk artists com complete drawings and then trace them onto the silk, but I can't. Drawing directly onto the silk with the dye resist is like improvisation. Tracing is like practicing the steps of a choreography. It's a bit dull. And so each piece is a letting go, an act of trusting, accepting the path and the piece, and it's being created as it's being created, and in so doing, following the path of being true to my authentic self. Painting on silk is a kind of personal reconnaissance as well as of growth, coalescing my relationship to movement, nature, and creativity. If you'd asked my child self what I really wanted to be when I grew up, my secret unspoken dream, a toss-up, visual artist or dancer? They both seemed as impossible and impractical as becoming my more dreamy dreams, a fairy or a witch. What I didn't know I knew is that creating art is a kind of magic. But we can't follow our dreams unless we listen first and believe in ourselves, and I didn't yet trust to listen. Painting feels like a, oops, ah, I lost a page. After 15 years as an English teacher, the need to create rather than assess, to grant listening to my own intuition and honor my own expressivity, required that I follow other paths. After completing my initial training in life coaching, I came up with the term creative empowerment facilitation to describe my process with people. It often doesn't involve art making as such, but it does involve thinking creatively about change and being and solutions, and it very much involves learning to listen. Painting is a way of listening to my deep self. 
It wakes up something from the way I felt as a child when, in the lavender light of dusk, after everyone else had gone home, I skated and skated, self-taught, leaning into the curves, finding my way into spins, until I wasn't sure if I was skating on ice or on the lavender light itself. It awakens my wonderment. We only get to see so many full moons. Only so many times do we get to feel the strange pull toward the deer whose tracks we are following until suddenly we come upon their startle-eyed beauty before they leap away. Painting feels like a healing, the completion of a cycle, living the other half of my unspoken childhood dream. I recall the first time a man simply stood outside my booth at an art show, still smiling. He told me how peaceful it made him feel. Last year, Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center's palli palliative care unit bought five hangings for their treatment room. I'm honored to help people pass from this plane more easily. I guess in painting on silk, I'm also doing good work in the world. In part, it's the paintings. In part, it's the effect of the silk itself. Shut the door and the pieces in my stairwell ripple like wind over water or like seaweed unfurling in a wave. Part of the preciousness of life is its very limitation, its ephemeral quality. I paint an almost breathing surface which allows for no erasure because it's more like life. Sometimes we make regrettable remarks, would like to go back and change things but can't. We can only learn to accept things as they are, make the best of awkwardness, learn to love and live with imperfection, lean into what's good, and keep moving forward toward our inner vision. <laughs>